The close friendship between America and Germany is built on our shared values. We cherish individual rights. We uphold the rule of law. And we seek peace among nations. Peace. Now, keep in mind, President Trump has attacked Merkel multiple times for her open border policy of welcoming thousands and thousands and thousands of refugees, while President Trump has said it's a top priority to ban refugees from countries that don't have proper vetting in place. A little tension much between these two leaders? Let's bring in Howard Gutman, former ambassador to Belgium, and Clifford May, Foundation for Defense of Democracy's founder and president. Okay, I want, I want to start with you, Ambassador. Uh, look at this. It was this video from when they had their first photo op. And I'm going to explain to viewers what you saw here. And you can't really hear it because the audio wasn't so good. But you had reporters and people off camera yelling, handshake, please, handshake, which is, is usually par for the course. And then you see Ms. Merkel lean over and she says, I kind of think they want us to shake hands, and he would absolutely not reach out. In fact, she kind of smiled, and they kept yelling, handshake, handshake, nothing. They did shake hands later, though. So do we find common ground, Ambassador? Do these two leaders behind closed doors at this hour figure out where they see eye to eye? That press conference was a skit worthy of Saturday Night Live. Why? Let me, let me take you a little behind the scenes there. So um, uh, Chancellor Merkel knew that the one issue Donald Trump, President Trump, wanted to claim credit for was her stepping up and paying her fair share of NATO. She knew he would eat back his words about saying NATO was obsolete and they're on their own, but he was going to bring her to the table about paying her fair share of NATO. So she stepped up and said, we will reach the 2% mark by 2025. Well, here's the exclusive for the Liz Clayman show. When I went to see the Belgians and my co-ambassadors went to see their European counterparts, they've already committed to meet their share by 2020. So as President Trump was smiling, Chancellor Merkel just took a five-year extension on getting to the 2%. Huh. Um, and that, that's typical of what there is. He's saying we've got to get a fairer trade deal. Right. This was terrible. And she turns around and says, turns out, President Trump, they oppose this trade deal far more in Europe. Um, than okay. they ever did in America. She's smiling uh, while he claims his victory. So, well, if, if this all is true and it plays out, I'm not questioning your validity, but uh, that he said, I need it by 2025. She just bought five years, Clifford May, on, on NATO at a time yeah. when, when America is shouldering way more than anybody else on this issue. I think that's right. Look, Germany and the United States have common interests. Germany and the United States have common enemies. We don't have common solutions at this point. Merkel was obviously much more comfortable with President Obama than she can be with President Trump. But this is the beginning of a conversation, the beginning of a dialogue. And at least rhetorically, she uh, understands that it's important that Germany pays its fair share for NATO if she wants NATO to succeed. Um, yes, the president called it obsolete. I think he meant obsolescent. And the difference is that NATO is going in a bad direction, and he wants it to go in a better direction. Okay. I think she does, too, but she does have to do more. Well, open borders are an extremely sore spot, Ambassador. Uh, Donald Trump is, is closing uh, certain avenues that have been open, or at least he's trying to, with his uh, travel ban on certain countries. Um, and Merkel, at some point, when you look at the attacks that have happened, that have been perpetrated in Germany by either refugees or immigrants, we can put them up on the screen. At some point, her own people are going to probably demand the same thing, no? Liz, it couldn't disagree more. Our country has now gotten less safe rather than more safe. If you look at who does the attacks, it isn't a refugee from five countries or seven countries who slipped in unvetted. It is someone in our country, it's been, who's an American who grew up in Newark and went to Orlando and who needed an outlet and decided to hate the United States. Uh, Wednesday will be one year since Belgium got attacked. I will be in Belgium on Wednesday. Uh, there's been no other attacks. The security system is far greater at Zavenham Airport than in Kennedy Airport or, any, or Dulles Airport or any U.S. facility. But also, the, the best news for the Europeans is the hate got transferred from them to the America, which is now banning Muslims, and so they are now out of the limelight because we put the target on our back. Uh, Clifford, do you want to you answer that? 
Yeah, look, the, the, the problems and pathologies of the Middle East cannot be solved by trying to move all the good people out of the Middle East into Europe and to the U.S. This is not a Muslim ban. It's a ban on seven countries where the government does not have much control and we can't do very much betting. We have to, we have to do other things about the Middle East other than have an open border policy. The, an immigration state and a welfare state mixing is a very dangerous combination. President Trump knows that. I'm not sure whether uh, Chancellor Merkel gets that or not, uh, but I think you're going to see more of that in Europe, a worry that European culture and European society right, right. is going to be compromised over time. Well, uh, the, you know, the laundry list of attacks is, is disconcerting, but yes, homegrown terrorism has happened here, definitely. It's good to see both of you. Ambassador, safe trip back to Belgium on the one-year anniversary. It was all the best. Cliff